Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 12 of my Industrial Revolution 3 playthrough. In this episode, we are going to do the first step in electrifying our factory, which is making computers and inserters. Enjoy. So now that we have these circuits, we can start making the computers, which require the small iron frames, and then go into the large iron frames. So we have a bit of a path to follow here, but we don't really have any space left. So I think we're going to have to do a 180 degree turn and start heading back. It is quite frustrating in the sense we'll have to do that same turn in order to collect materials, but it is what it is. There's just no more room left unless we go right over it, but the problem is there is we can't easily cross this cliff because it is a big one and completely unbroken and we're going right down the middle of it, so that would get very annoying very quickly. But we have a couple of machines that need to go in order here. It's gonna be weird doing things from the other direction, but first we need to make these small iron frames does this go into other things? It absolutely does. Let's put a computer next to it to see if it's fast enough on its own. And it is. So it's just iron plates and iron rivets. This one requires no extra materials except for all of those tubes and circuits. For now, how about we do the pallet transfer in order to just keep items in buffers. And then if we need to make a belt out of it, we can pull the items off the pallets because this is going to have a belt coming by with all of those circuit components. And then all of that goes into the big frame and they are balanced with each other. The computers mainly go into the frames. So it's actually probably fine if they're balanced with each other because we're not gonna need many more computers beyond what goes into the frames. We might need some in our inventory though. Not many, but like we'd wanna build say a locomotive. So we are probably going to need to have them. So let's do the pallet buffer again. And then finally, this machine needs to get all of this stuff, which in itself may not be possible. It needs a ton of iron plates. And basically it has to be completely filled up if it had any hope of being fast enough. I mean, that would work technically, but unfortunately actually inserting the materials into this will not. However, it only needs to have one rivet machine I think that will mostly do it. We're definitely gonna have to have a lot of belts coming in here. We're going to need another one right here. Oh, I'm making more packs for these iron beams. So we're definitely getting to the point now where having a main bus is starting to become a lot more appealing than what we're working with now because it's starting to become a lot of spaghetti. But we want to resist that urge until we have electrified everything and also ideally we have robots because that would change the design of the setup if we were delivering items to our inventory via robots rather than using these transfer plates but you really don't want to do anything main bussy when you just have steam like this i think we are doing okay and let's leave some space in the middle who knows how much it needs but how about we give it four just in case there really shouldn't be anything in the middle but Let's just leave it in there. So if we did this, it should fit. And the steam does need to connect. And we are having problems with steam throughput. So it might be kind of annoying to have to constantly move these pipes around. But how about for now, we have some of our new iron pipes just going straight over everything and going straight through the forest too, without issues. Basically straight to the steam bus itself. Guess I won't worry about putting lights in there with its own steam tank. It's all basically connected to the same thing anyway, but that should help isolate the top from the bottom because I think that uh, this is a very long series of pipes for the steam to go through. And we're probably better off starting with a new pipe. If we put this there, it would reach, and then we can move the beams elsewhere if we have to, to make everything fit. And this one that's further away would be the long belt with the computer components on it. Also, we don't want to go too nuts because uh, we are using a lot of our iron. So building anything big would be quite annoying right now. Okay, let's connect the iron. And we're definitely using all of it up. <laughs> that we have our full belt coming in, but it is disappearing to everything that we need it for. Actually, what's the input requirement for all of these circuits? That's about three items a second. And our inserters really only do two. So it means we can't really do this thing right there 
because we're going to need to have this belt coming through. Another milestone. Let's set this one to the direct insertion method as well for now. Definitely starting to reach the limit of yellow belts here, but that's fine because we're just about to unlock red ones. And we just need this mini bus to last long enough. It doesn't have to last forever, just long enough until we're at the point where we want to do a main bus. Well, there we go. We made a large iron frame. Let's do a pallet right there to get the small frames. And for now, we can drop the computers in there and then figure out what we want to do with them later. We've got some new components here and less and less space on our toolbar to put them. Guess we'll get rid of the ingots because we're not really using them for any handcrafting anymore. There's the small frames, there's the big frames, and as far as these other items, the tubes, uh, sure, it goes into a couple things we might want to make, and the circuits, certainly yes. So we need tubes, circuits, and basic computers. So lots of new requests to make. Tubes, circuits, computers, small frames, Big frames. And we gotta position this somewhere, wherever the uh, line will end up being. Guess we'll put it there for now and see. But there we go. Asking for those items. And while we're here, we could ask for the other two as well. And does that reach? It does. <laughs> there we go. We've got our new iron items, and we've got our new computer items as well. As long as everything holds out. And looks like it's another trip for iron. Steam is mostly holding out though, so that's good. Okay then, we should have just about everything we need to start electrifying the factory. Of course, the cornerstone to any electric factory is electric inserters. These do not require the previous tier inserters. They are their own thing. So we need a circuit board, electric motor, iron piston, iron rod, so the motors we'll have to make. But otherwise we are set for that. And then the long-handed version just has extra iron rods and pistons. And also, finally, we get access to a filter inserter, which is just a regular inserter with more circuits. So we'll hit that, and the rotation speed is 360 degrees. And that's the same as our steam inserters, so they're not going to be any faster but they are going to run on electricity. The energy consumption is the same regardless of which inserter it is. All of them are 17.9 kilowatts and our inserters now are much higher. The two short ones are 35 kilowatts and the long handed ones are 52.5. So doing this will save us some energy and we need to think about which thing in our factory we want to upgrade first because it's kind of a lot. So it would be nice to do it gradually rather than all at once. And probably one of the things we're spending a lot of energy on are these labs. To research the better lab, we are going to need optics. And that's also perfectly fine. The lamp requires thermionic tube, glass, iron plate, copper wire. That's all stuff we can do now. So that is pretty straightforward. And then that will give us access to the electric laboratory, which requires large iron frames and some of the new stuff like the EM coil and the heavy copper cables. But that is a good place to start, especially because the labs are so close to where we are making steam. And the labs have a research speed of 2 and 250 kilowatts of energy consumption, whereas the steam labs are research speed of 1 with 125 kilowatts. So it's not going to save us any energy in the long run. It's just going to be a lot more convenient. Well, research is going a little slow, so I suppose at this point it's time to max out our labs based on the amount of science we have. So first we'll do an extra two of them. And that's not quite enough. And after that we are maxed out. We are using up the science packs a little faster than we can make them. So let's come through here picking up a bunch of stuff because we have a new item to make. Electric inserters, finally. Most of it's the same, but it does require electric motors. Those motors do go into some random stuff, but besides electric inserters and rotor units, we're probably not going to be making too much of that other stuff. We're probably going to want a lot of construction robots, but not yet. So how about we make motors in the middle, and on one side, 
We can do rotors, and then on the other side we will do the inserters. So in the middle is the motor, and this is the first intermediate item that now has four input requirements instead of three. So that might be fun. Let's try the iron plates and gears first, because we might need a bunch of those. And we do. Two machines making the plates, and then one making rods, and one doing the wire. But because of the position of the belts, we might have to do something like this. So it would pick up and insert right here, where the copper belt would be the one on the bottom, which would be inserted into the copper machine, and the one on the top would be the iron belt, which goes into the iron rod machine and is inserted. So that should be it for the motors. We'll do the rotors on the other side because they're probably not going to go anywhere. This is small frames, motors, and plates. Small frames are over there, so they'll have to get here somehow. We could just use our inventory to do this. And that probably makes sense because we're just not going to need very many of these rotors. So the only thing the machine actually needs are plates, and it only needs the one machine to do it. The motors we probably want to pick up. Then pallet there, pallet there, pallet there. Which should get at least this side covered. So let's pick it up and see if it lines up. Oh, it does. That is fantastic. We will line it up and move this pipe down just so the steam keeps getting in. Cool, we have optics now. So connecting the iron, it goes through and it looks like we needed to split the iron down for this side so it would be right there. And the copper would go underneath all of this stuff. It's been a while since we've used it, but it is still relevant. And there we go making the rotors. We do need to make a special request for the small iron frames out of that one. And this does technically connect everywhere. And there's no room on our list to put them. Nonetheless though, we do need to make the request. Interesting though, it seems to be kind of glitching where the small iron frames are available. We're trying to pick them up in our inventory, but they're not dropping them off. So it seems like if you do this, the plates cannot be overlapped on those specific areas. So we would have to put a plate here, and it could really go anywhere, but we might as well space it out to like right here. So now, if we stand there, we pick them up. If we stand there, we drop them off. So we can't quite just stand on one plate and have them all automatically transferred, but running out of inventory space for all this stuff too. Electric motors and electric rotor units. So <laughs> there we go. Inventory is full of junk. Our motors are looking pretty good. Seems like it's kind of taking a while to fill up though. And they don't go into that much stuff, so I suppose we could afford to wait. They do go into inserters though, so that would be kind of annoying if we had to wait. Especially because I believe the earlier part of the bus actually has four machines making the copper ones. So we probably should expand this. Let's copy it as it is because everything is already set up. How about we do, like, no basic components at all? So no beams, no plates, no pistons. Should clear it up a little bit. Then electronics components, the computers, <laughs> so much stuff. So much stuff to track here. But I think we're good for now. Well, one thing to keep in mind is we are going to need to make this heavy copper cable. So we can make the large wooden poles so we don't have to use tiny poles for everything. And that is our first uh, legitimate use of rubber. So we need to do a rubber farm. And unfortunately, this is probably gonna take a little while because we have so little rubber wood. We could go out and just find more. That would certainly help jumpstart everything here because now when we start a tree farm, we are not going to be able to start it with rubber trees. We will have to plant them. And the way it works when you have a forestry that has mixed trees, so in other words, it has rubber and regular trees, it will prioritize the rubber trees. So you don't necessarily have to cut all the trees down. Nonetheless, we do need to have a supply of rubber trees to get started. And they're the same as everything else where it takes 12 wood to make one tree. So if we want to plant 20 trees, we're going to need 240 total rubber wood. Luckily there is a lot more of it here that we didn't pick up. And just keep following the coastline because that's the easiest place to find these trees. That's an interesting forest. All the trees are knocked over. Because one thing about growing trees is 
you can't do it quickly, that you kind of need to set up the forestries ahead of time. Also, don't forget to just uh, check in the grasslands. You might find some rubber trees there, and they do grow in big forests. It's just they are quite uncommon. But nonetheless, keep your eyes open for them if you're looking for the trees. It's just kind of funny how this particular type of tree loves to be on the coastline. I don't know if that's an alien biomes thing or if that's just how IR3 is set up, but I think we have enough wood. So let's make 20 of them, and the rest of the wood can be our initial supply. Although, these trees are probably going to get started kind of slow because I like to build these forest trees in groups of four. Oh, there's some biters out there. Guess we should fight them. Just the worms, though. Thank goodness we can walk through this. There we go. That's a pretty good group of them. Oh, the trees disappeared. And there's more worms. However, we do have another iron patch here. Probably was about the same distance away as this one was. However, there is a sparkly rock. This one has diamonds in it. Might as well grab them. <laughs> the worms are a little mad, but we'll just leave them alone for now because that's kind of a narrow spot. But now we have some diamonds. They are just like rubies in that you don't want to waste them because it takes them to make them. So for now, we'll just hold on to them. And uh, that might be the end of the trees for a while because I am not seeing any more of them out here. But that might have been our supply of trees. I guess we'll just make the trees we can make. And is this a good spot to make some rubber trees? Sure, seems like it. Well, for now, we'll just copy this whole thing. Move it over into the next chunk. And down it goes. We probably don't need to have all of these growing rubber trees, but to keep things consistent, we probably should put the trees in here. So you see, it used to be growing all those other trees, but then once we put the rubber tree, it instantly did not care, and it switched over to the rubber trees instead. Probably should be careful. I think I'm placing way too many of them in here. Not that it matters too much, because it all works out to be the same in the end. Just so it's a little easier to uh, understand when we're walking by, how about let's clear out the chunk of any non-rubber trees. And luckily, this planter will not actually rip out the trees we placed. Well, we don't need these water pipes anymore, but they're in our inventory and they match what's already on the ground. So the pollution cleaning effect of this forestry is going to be limited because it's only going to be cleaning pollution while it's making the rubber. Let's switch the sides of this. So the rubber wood will be on the bottom and regular wood is on the top. That way they can share half of the belt each. Well, the rubber is getting started already. And we do need to have a filter on here to make sure it goes through correctly. We do this. Output on the left is that rubber wood. And then on the right goes regular wood and then it will go to the correct side of the belt. So hopefully this is all good here. Seems like it. And there we go, we got a rubber tree. So all of this rubber wood is going to at least make it to here, but we don't want to send it to the bus. And IR3 actually gives us a pretty cool filter here, where if you do a splitter, they have this blocked filter, which is pretty neat. So that just means nothing can go in that direction. And that's a little easier than like using fish or something. It, accomplishes the same thing in the end, but at least this one will never be confused. It will just not let stuff go through that side. Basically, I guess we could just process it right here. So let's calculate for it that our goal is to make rubber, which comes from rubber wood, and it gets crushed in a crusher. The input will come from four forestries. So if we drop this down to about 0.2, that kind of shows us the numbers that the actual amount of rubber that just four forestry is going to make is going to be very little. But because we only need them for power poles right now, it should be fine. But anyway, that means that we need one steam crusher here. And I suppose for now we can just share steam with the rest of the bus because there's no other steam pipes out here. And I don't know how relevant it's going to be because we are soon going to have electric lights, but here's some steam ones. It is kind of weird when it's the copper pipe lamps and then they're sandwiched between the iron undergrounds, but <laughs> it works. And because the steam crushers automatically select recipes, it will just get crushed. Let's get everything connected there.
Rubber is one of those things that's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. However, the wood chips are significantly easier to see. Actually, let's turn this to the side for a second so we can put this in here and then say to the left goes the wood. And then to the right, wood chips are just going to go down the line and they uh, look pretty cool. And finally, this one belt, although we could try to straighten it out a bit by going down here. It'll come down and then need to be delivered somewhere. Actually, let's just stop it up here for now. The wood chips will continue to go down the belt along with the wood. They will get freely mixed together with this chest here, and that's fine. Eventually, these wood chips are going to get mixed in here with these kilns. Let's make one more, and I guess we actually need wood for that. There we go. We'll put one more in there. But what that lets us do is look at the ingredient input. And because it can take both wood or wood chips, it means that if one of these does not have any available wood to pick up, it will wait for wood chips to make it by. And since wood is so readily available, I'm guessing it's going to be this last one that's probably eventually going to run out of wood and it's just going to start picking up chips. It is possible that this can get plugged up. That, for example, if each kiln gets a couple of wood chips, since the recipe is 50 to make the charcoal, that it could take a long time for those to uh, clear out. So knowing that, even though it's probably not required, let's split this apart where to the right go the wood chips. And it will also slowly be turned into charcoal. Might as well get something else going so when we are done with the inserters and labs, we can have something else ready to go. And it's kind of hard to say, but how about we do Automation 2, of course that gives us the electric assembler and also the small version and their speed is 1.25 with a energy consumption of 125 kilowatts. If you compare it to our steam assemblers, they are also 125 kilowatts, but the crafting speed is only 0.625. So by switching to these, it will cut the energy consumption in half. Although it does have a minimum energy consumption, which the steam machines do not have, I'm sure in the long run, the electric assemblers are much better. Also, the primary reason that I want to research this is for the electric scrapping machine. Destroys items to produce scrap. Accepts any item made from metal, glass, wood, stone, or concrete. Recovery efficiency averages at 75%. So this is the recycling machine that is built into IR3. And we will certainly want to cover that. But for now, we want to make sure we're researching it because as we start replacing all these copper machines with iron, we are suddenly going to have an inventory full of junk like these copper pipes that we can't do anything with. And we're going to get overloaded very quickly. So we need a machine to dump all those resources in. And that is what that machine is for. I don't want to research too much because we have a lot of machines to replace and it's going to take some time. But how about we do crushing and mixing too? That'll give us access to the electric crusher and also the iron ore crushing recipe. This must be done in an electric crusher. We can't do it in a steam one. So if we want to increase the yields on our iron in the same way we're doing with copper and tin, we're going to need to upgrade to electricity. And the steam crusher is 1.25 speed, which matches the electric crusher. So in this situation, there is not an energy savings to be had by switching to the electric ones. Besides, of course, being able to throw modules in and also having the indicator lights to see how it's doing. This also gives us access to the electric mixer. We're not really going to use it for anything yet, but it does what it sounds like. It's basically a crusher that crushes more than one thing at the same time. That's used for certain recipes like landfill and concrete. And that should be enough research for now. I don't want to go nuts with the research because all of this is being powered by iron here, which requires manual trips with the heavy roller. So I don't want to spend too much of our iron because that's just that much sooner that I'm going to have to do another trip. So I'd rather uh, put it off. So let's try to stick with things that are immediately useful for what we're working on. So I believe the next thing we wanted to do was electric inserters. So let's see what we can put together here. Uh-oh. No. We finally been attacked. Well, that's not good. But at the same time, I really don't want to just do a huge wall everywhere because of all of these cliffs. Stop it. So where did he come from anyway? Uh, it could have been out here because the pollution cloud 
does not really extend out that far from our factory. It's actually pretty clean. It does make sense they attacked there, because that is where the pollution comes from. Although you can see how much more pollution we're making from our copper boilers now, which is making steam. And actually, they by far are the most polluting part of our factory. It's just the steam, which makes sense, because it's the same as, like, the electricity. Well, without going too nuts, for now, how about we just put a single turret in here and load it up with some amount of shells, and hopefully that's enough. Also, one thing you've probably noticed is that when you shoot, your shots do not actually hit your buildings or even trees. So that is a combat change with the projectiles. I guess they do hit rocks, though. But when you're fighting at least around your own structures, the bullets actually go over them. So that's actually kind of cool. So for now, I think that's just going to have to be enough because I'm not sure what else we should do because any other solution is going to be very monotonous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well this one in the middle will make the electric inserters. And then we'll have two more on each side, making the other types. And how many inserters does this one make? Yeah, 0.625 a second seems like that would be a reasonable amount. Although it's interesting that this one will not require any parts from the bus at all, where this one does. So actually because of that, I think we could move this kind of up here somewhere and see if we can get it all to fit. Awesome. I guess we could start making these electric, but since we don't even have electric poles in here yet, I'm not sure how useful that would be. All right, so we need another machine there and another one there. So we would direct insert the motor there. I'm desperately trying to make all this stuff work. I think it can though, without us having to have a bunch of extra belts in here. And this is the danger of kind of belting so many things like this is that very quickly it kind of gets out of hand so you need to be very careful about how much of it you do and when all right cool that research is done i guess we'll uh keep working on this for now it's going to be very spaghetti you want to try to make the minibus work as long as it seems like it is and the time you bail on the minibus to create an actual main bus is when it looks like it's just too much spaghetti and too much belts going through where it would be much easier to just have a regular main bus. So we're getting close to that point, but I definitely think you should put off the main bus stuff until at least you have robots. And that's in the steel age because then it will be so much easier and a lot less rebuilding will occur. Because if you try to main bus all of this, it's just going to be wrong in the end and just require a lot of resources. And if it needs to be an underground, right there it can be. But that should be most of that anyway. But nope, I put them on the wrong side. It is making them, but <laughs> the sides are wrong. Where it needs to be like this. We could potentially just use the logistics for this. Since it's not something we're going to need very often. I really wish we could just kind of place it up here. I mean, we could, it's just it's going to be in the way of our transfer plates. So there's no clean solution, unfortunately. Let's just do it in the same way. We could make these a little more consistent. Jump over everything like that. We also need to have one here. We can finally get rid of those steam inserters, because I believe we are done with them here. And that means getting rid of the requests, and I guess we'll just replace them with the electric versions. And we need another transfer plate out here because this one does not reach all the way. So we plop the ones we have in here, and now it's making the filters. So that's mostly automated. The only things it requires us to juggle around are those yellow inserters. How are we doing on rubber? Well, we're getting some, and very slowly, these farms will continue to grow trees and expand. If we end up having a lot of extra rubber, we can make it expand faster. Oh, there is a missing pipe up there. That would explain it, if half of them haven't even been running. Because of that missing pipe. <laughs> Whoops. And that was where the majority of the trees were, too. But it's not enough that we can just place an electric inserter down, because... We need to have electricity to power them. However, that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching.
and I will see you later.